Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. It's Friday, that means it's the Rex and Robbie show. What's up, Rex? How you doing? What's up, Robbie? I can't stand you're so cheerful on Fridays. Oh, come on, you gotta be cheerful every day. How you start your day determines the course of the rest of it, right? This is true. I This is true. True statement. All right. So... <laughs> So how you doing, Rex? I guess you're not doing as chipper and, and, and well as I am today. Fridays, by the time I get to Fridays, it's been a pretty long week, you know? So, yeah, yeah so so I'm usually pretty tired by the time I get to Fridays. But you are always cheerful and chipper. And given that you're a supporter of the Dallas Cowboys and the, the Los Angeles Lakers, I don't see why. Uh, <laughs> it's confusing to me. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't focus on the things that make me upset all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I try to focus on the positive. Like, I'm super excited to be here because I love chatting with you, Rex, about these subjects and these topics, bro. I have to admit, you come up with some good ones. I thought this week, man, nah, you know, what you said on Monday, I was like, man, that's kind of a rehash of what we did the last couple of weeks. And I'm thinking, man, that's going to be weak. And then you come out with this one. So I'm impressed. I am impressed, Rock and Robbie. Well, luckily, DC Entertainment and Variety has provided us with something to talk about. So tonight's topic, by the way, everybody, and be sure to enter a comment below so you can enter to win a contest. The winner will be announced on Monday's show over at The Experience. By the way, they just reached 1K subscribers, so station to The Experience. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Um, but tonight we're going to be talking about does DC Entertainment need an overhaul? It just got reported by Variety, that now that the merger's kind of done, the Warner, the, what is it, Warner Bros., Warner Discovery, Warner Discovery, Brothers, yeah, yeah, whatever that that they're calling it now, they are now going to look at DC Entertainment, the whole thing, we're talking about films, TV, all the way down into the comic book industry, obviously, to try to realign some things, restructure, overhaul, re reorganize that whole slate of property together. And we'll get into that conversation. But first, I want to ask Rex, have you watched the latest Moon Knight? I have not, oddly enough. I, I've been meaning to. I, I meant to wet, uh, Wednesday night. I meant to last night, but I just had stuff to do, and I got distracted by the time. You know, by the time I get sleepy, you know, I don't want to watch something that I want to pay attention to. So I watch something, you know, kind of just like filler. So I did not. So tonight I will go back and watch it. Although even John, who is always a very uh, – John Cole, who's always a very – optimistic you know he will always take the angle of of positivity even he was a little eh about uh about wednesday's uh, episode so i'm curious to see what he he met he, he thought it was um how did he put it uh just kind of clunky i think was yeah. the, the phrase that he used i think so clunky is a good word he meant. yeah i think clunky is a good word for it i uh i don't have a rock and robbie live this week so I, overall i like, I guess it's an okay story, but not necessarily for Moon Knight. I still am really bothered at the treatment of the character of Mr. Knight in particular, that side right. of it. They are starting to introduce some other concepts that are familiar to the property that are, so there's some, there's like Oscar Isaac is still brilliant. The music's still cool, but man, my problems with certain aspects of the characterization of the mythology and the characters of Moon Knight's personalities and CG, this like the CG. I come on, I cannot stand. Why are they CGing his cape? Like, just put a dude in a suit and put a cape on it. It looks so video gamey, and it, right, it pulls right, me right. out. It pulls me out when I see stuff like that. Well, I'm interested to see what you guys are talking about. So I, I will definitely Friday night. I will definitely be catching up. So I'll there are some things though. We're going to be about it with you on Monday. Yeah, there are some things I really did appreciate in this episode though. So. For episode two, I gave it a two out of five, but this one I'd probably go three. So, but if you okay. look, it's like four for episode one, then two for episode two, and then a three. So it's been kind of I a. Didn't, I didn't feel four for episode one. I, I'm gonna have to say I'm, I'm about two point five for the first two. Yeah, I I, I yeah. think I was I was I gave it a four with anticipation that they were going to take it maybe a little bit more serious going forward. Yeah, I'm still I'm still waiting for that wow moment, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Me so too. So obviously I'm not getting it in 3. Well, we'll see. you you never know. Maybe you'll maybe you'll like it. So. I don't think I I don't think I'm going to differ too much from you guys, especially if John's kind of like, you know, eh, on the fence about it. Yeah. And I think there's only 6 episodes, so we're like halfway through and I'm yeah, like, come on. Yeah. Like it yeah, ain't going to get Yeah, there's not going to be too much I think they're going to be able to do 
in the last three. But yeah, anyway, so I would agree. That's how it is. So let's talk about tonight's topic. And that is, does DC Entertainment need an overhaul? So like we were talking about Warner Discovery, they're looking into, see, who's the guy? It's David Saslov, who's the uh, one of the top, yeah, he's the CEO of the combined company. So Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, that mergers together. That's a, That was a $43 billion deal for Warner Media joining. Huge. Yeah, and so you get Discovery, they do all that uh like all the uh, the reality shows and those kind of, they don't do so much science stuff anymore, but they do those like reality shows and stuff right. combining with Warner. So this is, this is, you know, in a world where <laughs> Disney has acquired all the Fox properties and Marvel and star Wars and all this stuff, like it's either this or it gets swallowed up by Disney. Right. So, right, 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 right. It, it's probably the biggest media deal that we've seen since then. You know, I mean, obviously what, what Disney did and, and, and how they moved was, was from, I guess from a, a corporate standpoint was, was, you know, a, a very smart move, you know, but then again, then you have one company that controls all of the important IPs and, you know, the intellectual properties out there. Is that a good thing or not? Well, I, you know, that remains to be seen. Yeah. So basically the idea is that it's been reported by variety that they're going to start looking at DC entertainment and basically see what they can do to align things a little bit better to support their superhero stable is what it says here. Uh, because they look at Marvel, they see what Marvel's doing. Uh, they're having successful movies. They've had successful movies, even movies that critically aren't so successful are successful as far as the money that they're bringing in and the audience and the, 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 all the activity on social media that it's generating and stuff like that. Right. Um, you got people doing, week to week reactions to Marvel TV shows. I don't see that with DC shows. I didn't see everybody hyped over Pennyworth on a channel that I didn't even know existed. I don't even know how to find it. You know what I'm saying? So they're looking at Marvel, what they do. They got their movies. They got their uh, Disney plus shows. They brought everything together kind of in one line supporting each other. Some could say it's weaker down at the bottom where the ideas generated at the comic book end right now because the comic books at Marvel, for instance, they just released Spider-Man No Way Home. At the time in the comic books, Peter Parker was in a coma. Ben Riley was Spider-Man. Doctor Strange is about to come out right now. Clea is the Sorcerer Supreme. Doctor Strange is dead. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. They're looking into trying to align everything a little bit better. I've seen this reported, Rex, as people saying that a bunch of people are about to get canned and fired at DC and good for that. It needs a change and blah, 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 blah. And a lot of people are thinking about DC Comics. Now, obviously, DC Comics is definitely going to feel the impact of this mm -hmm. realignment and shift and focus. But and I think some people may lose their jobs. I don't want anybody, you know, in these in, in this industry to lose their jobs. But there well, are let, some... let's say this. Let, okay, let's say this about that comment. Anytime you have a major merger like this, people lose their jobs, unfortunately. You know, uh, redundancy gets cut out, that type of thing. So you know, it's unfortunate, but it is inevitable, whether you're talking about uh, uh, semiconductor chips or you're talking about intellectual properties that deal with comics. Whenever you have a major merger like this, you're going to have, you know, redundancies in different departments and stuff. And, and any, any corporation to add value to their shareholders is going to do whatever they can to kind of reduce those redundancies. Yeah. So I think that's inevitable. I think some of it is going to be blamed on this particular topic, which I think is relevant because I think. All of us out there that are comic book fans, and even if you're not a comic book fan, but you're a fan of the MCU, the DC universe, you know, you, you enjoyed Wonder Woman, you enjoyed Peacemaker. I think the one thing that all of us have, have thought about was Marvel, no matter what, you know, and, and, and we're, we're criticizing Moon Knight a little bit. I mean, you know, we're saying, eh, you know, it's not what we thought it was. And it certainly isn't like Peacemaker was for me. That was like a wow moment. I loved it. I loved the series. But I think that, that we've all wondered, you know, why Marvel seems to have a cohesive plan. It doesn't all work, okay, but there is a plan, and they try to maintain that universe, and even it gets a little wonky, and you got Doctor Strange in the multiverse, and that's the way you're going to explain it, and whatever. There is a concerted effort to kind of keep the universe together, right, whereas we look at DC, and it's all over the place, okay, and I think probably the best example of that is the whole Flash controversy, okay? So you have a very successful TV show running on CW, right? So, so you know, everybody, I have to say, I think loved, you know, uh, uh, Grant Gustin, 
as the Flash. And when they started talking about doing a movie and incorporating, you know, him in 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 uh, uh, the the DC movie universe, we all expected that to happen. And then they went with Ezra Miller, which has turned out to be a real real bad decision on their part. Okay, yeah, now they've got major, for sure, right? Yeah, right. I mean, now they've got major issues to deal with. I, you know, I, I heard that the uh, the standalone Flash movie has been canned. And I think that attests to what that disorganized universe has led to. You know, it, 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 it's I, I think, you know, I, I, I read a couple of articles that, that you had linked out to me. And, you know, they're looking for that Kevin Feige guy to bring that whole thing together. And I think that's a good move because right now you're everywhere. You know, and it, it, it doesn't it doesn't really fit. Yeah. And, and you know, you're making like weird decisions. Like I, I think universally, any Flash fans would say that Grant, you know, you know, Grant Gustin was their favorite. You know, I like the character. I like the series. I like the actor. You know, he, he played, you know, a, 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 a good Barry Allen, if you will. And then you make the movie and you go with Ezra Miller. Why? You know, I, I didn't. You know, let's let's take out his his recent trials and tribulations, if you will. Yeah. But he was entertaining, but he came across like a clown. You know, in all the movies, he was kind of a clownish. You know, and and it was okay. Yeah. You know, it was definitely okay. I mean, but uh, he left a lot to, to be desired. Now, why wouldn't you bring Grant Gustin into that role? I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. So I think that that's what's really been happening with the DC universe. And I think they're recognizing that it's a problem because no matter what, we're still looking for those Easter eggs in Moonlight. You know, articles are being written about the Easter eggs in Moonlight, like the books he was reading. You know, you know, I just I just read about that. I missed it during the episode. But, <clears throat> you know, the books that he was reading, you know, links back to the to to to, to the MCU. Uh, that type of thing, you know, reading, I, I think, what was it about Asgard? And then he was reading another book. I forget what that was. That one was about, but it links back to the MCU. Okay. So even if Moon Knight turns out to be a disappointment, we still look for those Easter eggs to connect it back to the MCU. Peacemaker was phenomenal. I mean, I, I really, I am a big fan, you know, love John Cena in a role, uh, I thought that the, that the series had depth, you know, it had all those things, tongue in cheek comedy. It, it was great, but that's it. Right. So we're not talking about it anymore because there's nothing else connecting to it, you know, down the line, you know, Batman, which I haven't seen yet, but you know, it's going to be on uh, HBO max on the 18th anyway. So yeah, no there point running out. I'll just wait until it streams, but obviously fans loved it. You know, it was, you know, uh, uh, Patterson, who we all thought, you know, there was, there was a question whether or not he made a good Batman, but that, that question's been going, you know, going around since Michael Keaton took the role. So it seems like, you know, it, 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 he had a good portrayal. Uh, Zoe Kravitz, obviously. But they're all standalone successes. And you need to, you know, for that that kind of, to allow you to experiment, to allow you to, 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 to kind of continue on, you know, you need that kind of, kind of Kevin Feige kind of vision, if you will, to bring it all together because even your it, it gives you the ability to to take more chances because even the ones that may not work there's still buzz about it you know yeah. what i mean there's still buzz about it i mean even the eternals and and obviously uh morbius is is getting shellacked out there um you know well but, sony's a whole other issue right yeah like, well sony's yeah. a whole no, another issue that that becomes a corporate issue we understand that but but even a, a, with those corporate challenges you can see they're dragging it along. Okay. You know, Spider-Man, no way home. They're dragging it along. And even if Morbius turns out to be what we all think, you know, in even Eternals, it's still something we watched. It's still something that's going to fit into that universe. And there's a kind of cohesiveness in that with DC, it's just all over the place. And, and, and then you, you're not really going to get, get people to watch the ones that aren't, a, that aren't that great, if you will. You know, because it's a standalone. So I don't have to watch it if I don't like it. But with Marvel, you feel like, yeah, this is kind of sucky, but I'm going to watch it because, you know, it connects to the MCU, you know, mm -hmm. type, type of thing. And, and, and that's, that's really what's missing. So I, I think DC is recognizing that, that they're not maximizing the, their properties and, and they're going to attempt to do that. Now, can they? I, that's another question. I don't know. 
Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see this restructure and how it, and how it shakes out. And and yeah, there have already been like a lot some firings and people being laid off and that is going to continue obviously mostly at the executive level and up because at a certain point they have to be like who is responsible for what we're in right now like why right. is marvel able to to synergize all their stuff together like this better than we can like you're right like even if a moon knight turns out to be a disappointment to me i watched it because it's part of that story it's part of the ongoing thing it's like when you follow superhero comics and you follow a superhero universe whether it's dc or marvel one of the things that you love is the cohesive nature of it you feel like it's all building on itself and that it's a stepping stone maybe i didn't like this story but it's a stepping stone into the larger narrative of the marvel universe or the dc universe right and right. you miss that right and they do luck into some of these successes. Joker was a success for them, but that's not, that's something completely other than what they were trying to do. And then right. they have a Wonder Woman and an Aquaman movie that are successful, but they're trying to abandon the Snyderverse thing that they were doing. So now what do you do when you've got these actors like Ezra Miller committed to these roles that are connected to this, basically a failed launch of a franchise, right? And... What, what do you do? You know, like, like it's so crazy because they they have successes. They have good ideas. I think they make good. I mean, Batman was a success and they're trying to trickle that down into HBO Max with the Penguin series, you know, and they had that success with Suicide Squad. But that's something that there's another thing. So Suicide Squad, they did that movie. It didn't work. So then they basically did another Suicide Squad. That's kind of tied in. It was successful, led into the huge success of Peacemaker now it's like there's a lot to handle there. You know what I'm saying? And do you, okay, so it's going to trickle down to everything. And the big thing is like, why do we we have other people doing our stuff, and why are we not profiting off of these brands? And let's be honest, as huge as the MCU is now, and now everybody knows who Tony Stark and Iron Man is. That was not the case back in the day, right? Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, they are recognized worldwide. Yes. Why can't they get this to work, right? And I've heard rumblings too that it's going to go all the way down to the comic book side to the point of we need the comics to kind of match what we're trying to do. Not saying that we're going to change things for a movie and make that change reflect in the comics, but the comics, if you go read a Batman book, we want it to be Batman. You go read a Green Lantern book, it's Green Lantern. You go read a Superman book, right? Not Jonathan Kent, not 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 Jace Fox, you know, these kind of things, right? Those are characters that are that that could be built up and could really earn a solid reputation in the DC canon, but you got to have a synergy, right? Like that's something I'm I'm criticizing Marvel with with not having that synergy from the comics to the rest because it seems like they got it with the movies and the shows. Because those are working in tandem right now. Mm -hmm. People are watching those movies. People go and watch those shows. They rewatch them. They binge watch them. They talk about it every single week. You know, DC, like you said, yeah, Peacemaker's out. So what, what's everybody talking about now? Batman's done. So what? You know, they keep delaying these things out. All people are talking about right now with DC is the problems with Ezra Miller. And now they got this, all this money they've spent on this project that's been delayed out again. You got all this controversy with him. But you got to think, they also got like Michael Keaton. And Ben Affleck attached into that that project, so they got to release it. But like, what do you do? Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, that's well, that's going to be a tough yeah. job. Well, you know, I, I think that that they got a taste of how the formula could work and what has been successful for, for Marvel and the MCU. Okay, and that really was okay. First Suicide Squad, it sucked. Second Suicide Squad, successful. Now let's spin off Peacemaker, and that was hugely successful. That's exactly what Marvel's been doing, you know, and, and the, the, the whoever made the call to say, you know what, let's not use Grant Gustin, let's use Ezra Miller in the movie is a moron. I'm going to call it out right here on your show. That person, whoever made that decision is a moron, okay, because the magic of how they did it, think about it, the, the magic of how MCU did it, okay, we're going to have the, the, the big, you know, the big Avengers series and, and we're going to end it at Endgame and then the plan is we're going to spin off, okay, based on that monumental moment in, in the MCU with Avengers Endgame, we're going to spin off these, these streaming series. 
And what do we do? We create Loki, we create WandaVision, and we, we, we create Hawkeye and so on and so forth. And what did we do with that? We took the actors from the Avengers and we put them in the series. Now, I'm watching it just because I really enjoyed Avengers, okay, the movies. Now I want to see, okay, they're going to do a TV, they're going to do a streaming series. So that's going to be interesting for me to watch. And it's going to be the same character. So there's a continuity there. And I watched it and I some I enjoyed, maybe some I didn't so much. But at the end of the day, I watched it, you know, and, and Loki is Loki and Hawkeye is Hawkeye. And you can introduce new characters in, into the universe and every now and again refer back to the MCU and Endgame and all the things that happen, right? That's where DC, DC, in my opinion, really messed up. And you have the hint here, okay? You've seen how it works. You did Suicide Squad, you released Peacemaker, and it all worked. Everybody loved it. And now we got nothing. Now you have a Batman movie. You know, the Joker the Joker with uh, Joaquin Phoenix, great movie. I think Joaquin Phoenix is, is a phenomenal actor, okay? A little, little offshoot, you know, a little off the, off the, uh, uh, the, the, the normal road, if you will. Yeah, but you know, I loved it. No connection what's, whatsoever to the DC universe. Not Correct. zero. Yeah. Okay, it didn't have to be so, a Joker movie, right? Could have been just a dude who was a clown. Didn't have to be yes, Joker, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And and it would have held its own. And still, it still would have been a movie I probably would have watched. But you probably chased away a lot of fans. You know, like, well, this doesn't really connect to anything. You know, when's Batman going to show up? Especially so, fans that are right now accustomed and trained to expect connection from something like the MCU. You know, even 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 like Transformer movies. You know what I'm saying? Even these Fast and Furious, as crazy as it is, they try to fit the continuity in. Like, oh, we killed yes. off Han. We brought him back. We're going to try to explain it. They didn't do a good job, but they at least tried. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. You know, I mean, it, and it got kind of into the... The comic book realm. I mean, you got cars jumping from high rise to high rise. Like, come on, all right, seriously, yeah. okay. right? And it's like, you for know. instance, with with D with Marvel <laughs> right now, the multiverse is the big thing that it seems like both companies are going forward. Right? You got the No Way Home just came out. You got Multiverse of Madness coming up over at DC. You got their their Flash movie that they want to do where it's like he's seeing different versions of Batman and different characters from the previous movies and things like that. I get it. So there's a nostalgia tinge there that makes that exciting for a lot of fans. But in Marvel. What's exciting is that it's a natural progression of the story, it feels like. It feels like, oh, man, now they realize, slowly start realizing there is a multiverse, and they're building into that story. For DC, it just feels like somebody was like, well, we could just say it's the multiverse, and that's why we got three different Batmans cinematically going on at the same time. That's why we can still have uh, Jace Momoa as Aquaman. That's why we can still have Gal Gadot. But this, you know, and, and kind of... And at the same time, Marvel, in their comics... In just recent years, talking about like the last 10, 20, 30 years, they got big stories that are known that they can adapt for their own purpose into the MCU. Things like they did successfully with Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity War, with the Civil War, right? They got other things they can work and still will be working with like Secret Invasion, Armor Wars. What do you got at DC? You know, aside from like like the death of Superman, Batman Nightfall, Batman, you got all, take Batman out of it, right? What do you got at DC as big, well-known comic book stories? Just crisis event after crisis event? Is that what we're going to do for the movies? Like they, so they got to start generating some really cool, like stuff for them to be able to adapt and move up into television and film, I think. Well, they, they also have to, you know, it, it's too disjointed right now. I mean, you look at, at Batwoman, you look at Nightwing. I mean, it, it's all so disjointed and the universes don't really crisscross. You know, they do to a limited extent. Like the CW ones, they crisscross, but just there. You know, uh, uh, Arrow, I mean, what a lost opportunity that was. I mean, you were sitting on a, a genuine, you know, that was, to me, Arrow could have been Marvel's Iron Man. Okay. From there, you could have blossomed out the, the universe, okay? Although, you know, you're working from a reverse angle as opposed to, you know, how, how Marvel did it. And it's not as well planned, but at least that would have been a jumping off point. Yeah. But, you, you know, they totally squandered that, okay? Series ended, no connections, no nothing. And and some of the, some of the series that they've had, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like Gotham, I couldn't, I watched a few episodes of that and I'm like, this is so boring. Who yeah. cares about a police commissioner? 
I'd rather see, you know, uh, 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 Blue Bloods or something, an episode of Blue Bloods at least. You know, it was just, it was horrifically boring and it didn't really fit into the canon anyway. Yeah. You know, I and felt that same way about, I one. felt, I felt that same way about Smallville, right? Like, okay, like yeah. I get it, but like, what's, what's the purpose of doing a show before Batman becomes Batman or before Superman becomes Superman and you literally do everything that happens when he's Batman or Superman. You get what I'm saying? So like in Gotham, yeah. you already had all those villains. And in Smallville, you already you had Darkseid. You yeah. had all the Okay, so now he becomes Superman. What's left? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's some of the choices they've made. Like Pe Pennyworth, I, you know, I, I, you, you really? I mean, yeah. out of the, uh, the entire Batman canon, this is the best you guys can come up with? The police commissioner and the butler? <laughs> no, you know, right. I mean. What? It's because all they're why, thinking why is Batman. This? All they all was they that, got right now is all they got right now is Batman. They don't know what else to do with what. Like that's the biggest thing is like this dude who's like in charge of this stuff, who's talking about this, the this, the the CEO or whatever, is like, why can't why isn't Superman big? Everybody knows Superman. Why can't we do something with Superman? You know, and like, and it's right, it's true. And even on the comic book level, like, why is Superman like people say it's the most difficult? I don't think Superman is difficult to write. I just think people. I think Superman makes people feel bad about themselves. And they don't know how to write someone that's like just that good of a person just because I don't know. I mean, I'm not criticizing people, but he's so the brand recognition DC has it uh, more so than I mean, more people know who Superman is than Rocket Raccoon, you know, but they can make yeah. Guardians work. But the other thing, too, is get good creators and trust them and, and let it like James Gunn has made huge successes out of yes. D list characters at both Marvel and DC right now. And so you got to start thinking about that. Maybe James Gunn should be the guy, but then we wouldn't get James Gunn movies. We don't want that. So yeah, I mean, you know, I I, I gotta I gotta give uh, you know Kevin Feige uh, all the credit in the world. I mean, he obviously had a vision that 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 he pursued over years and years and years. You know, I'm sure there's been some pitfalls and some obstacles along the way. It just it just feel feels like that there was no one overseeing voice at DC, and people yeah. came up with these like side ideas and they pursued them. But they never thought about how to connect them, and and it's just all over the place. So, so I think what they've done is is rather than create a cohesive universe like the MCU, and then in, then creating a situation where the fans out there are going to watch. Okay, Eternals. I watched it. Okay, it was not good, but I watched it. But you know, and and, and they got away with it. All right. So yeah. of course I'm going to watch Doctor Strange and everything else, but. You got away with it. And when Spider-Man, whenever Sony finally releases it to streaming, you know, I'll watch that as well. But I think that, that, that what DC's done is you haven't created a situation where I'm going to watch. I, how do I put this? Every DC movie or series I judge independently of any other. So the fact that I liked Peacemaker is not going to make me watch Pennyworth. Yes. All right. But. You know, watching Loki or watching Hawkeye is going to encourage me, you know, in WandaVision, whatever, is going to encourage me to, to continue watching Moon Knight. All right. Now, it may disappoint me and I may complain about it, but I'm still going to watch it. Yeah. So so in, in a sense, I think DC is leaving money on the table or whatever you want to call it, because you forced your situation into each time you come up with something, it is completely independently judged on its own. You, you're not getting any help. And I think that's what Marvel's defeated. And, and I think that that encourages creativity because if you know it's not going to be a total bust, you can th throw some something that maybe eh, it's marginal. We don't know how it's going to work, but let's try it. You're more encouraged to do that. But if you're just producing stuff and it has to succeed or fail on its own as a standalone kind of show or movie, then, you know, then you don't you don't have that loyalty. You don't have that that brand loyalty, if you will. Yeah. So do you, th I, I, do you think, I think that what. Oh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You, you, you go. I was going to say, do you think that what they need to do is just start over? Like, just be like, you know what? We're starting from scratch. After this Aquaman movie, after this Shazam movie, or we're going to go, you know, let's just go back. I don't know that I, I don't know that they need to start from scratch. Okay. And, and I, you know, the multiverse idea, whether it's DC or MCU, I get it. It, it, it gives you a creative freedom if you introduce that. Right. So you can, you can branch off into something else and say, well, it was the multiverse. You say, that's why this is a different universe that we're, we're dealing with. Yeah. So it's kind of a catch all explanation. And I get why both, both sides want to do it. So I think DC can save it 
by using that concept. But there are certain things that have to happen. All right. So you know that Aquaman is a success. You know that Wonder Woman is a success. So Batman has become a success. I don't know what you're going to do about Superman, but that is an iconic piece of Americana culture. So there's got to be something you can do. All right. So you can reintroduce that somehow. OK. And, and if it's complicated, use the multiverse idea. You've got to ditch some of these bad ones, okay? And, and I think this, the CW ones are, are working as well, and you need to somehow bring them into the fold, okay? Life, Ezra Miller has given you the perfect excuse, okay? Bring, bring Grant Gustin in as Flash. He is Flash. He is universally known as Flash to the DC fans, all right? So incorporate him into the movies. Get rid of Ezra Miller. Nobody has any attachment to that to, to that particular character, okay? He's just a... The, the, the court jester in the Justice League at this point with no depth whatsoever, right? And he's made it easy. So you get rid of him. And then you get rid of, like, you know, Pennyworth. I'm not, come on. You know, get rid of these, these stragglers and then focus on that core. And you don't have to start over again, I don't think. Well, then what do you do with... Suicide Squad, another one. Yeah, okay? well, what do you do then, for instance, what do you do if you got, say... You, people want Gal Gadot to come back as, as Wonder Woman. People want Jason Momoa to come back as Aquaman. Like I can't think yes. of another person who would make Aquaman work. <laughs> you know what yes. I'm saying? I agree. But, but okay, their Batman has been Affleck. So, but now we got Robert Pattinson. So what do we right. do? What what if we... That's where know. the multiverse comes in. Well, yeah, right? but okay. So you, we can do that. And then we're having to like do these long things to like explain things. And then what you get, so you're going to have them wind up in a justice league, a multiversal justice league with a new Superman and Robert Pattinson, Batman or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I think they should just start over or maybe they should be like, you know what? Batman works. Let's slowly spin out the DC universe from them. But then again, that's super dark. You know, and I think DC needs to recognize that the big thing about Superman that worked in the past and can work today and what works so well about their universe is that it's not a dark universe. It's it's got dark elements to it, obviously, but it's it needs to be hopeful. Superman needs to be hopeful, bright, optimistic, and it needs to game change cinema like the Matrix did. They got to come up with some interesting way to show something like his perspective or his flying or something to make it feel like this is a monumental milestone moment in cinema history, like they did with the original Superman, right? I I don't know if that's even possible in this day and age. I mean, you know, you know, when when the first Superman movie came out, I mean, that was unique in and of itself, you know, in terms of special effects, in terms of superhero movie. So I, I think now it's it, it's really not possible for you to recreate that. So yeah. I think you have to take what's working and try to incorporate it all together somehow. So from the standpoint of, of you, you, you've got an Aquaman, you've got a Wonder Woman, you know that, right? So now you got to figure out your Batman dilemma, okay? Nobody wants Ben F. Affleck back as Batman, obviously. So you're going to have to somehow get the Robert Pattinson Batman into that storyline. How I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not a writer, but there, there are certainly enough talent out there for writers to be able to figure a way out of this this problem, you know. And then you need to reintroduce Superman, obviously, and somehow incorporate him. And then TV series can come out, you know. From from, I mean, I gotta be honest. There was such a heavy focus on Cyborg, and I didn't get that. You know, he was a marginal Teen Titans character. I didn't find it that interesting. Martian, you know, Martian Manhunter. He yeah. might be able to provide you this multiverse kind of excuse. I thought that that was an interesting character that wasn't thoroughly explored. I agree. You know, it just seems like they, 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 they've got a bunch of people that don't really understand the, the, the comic universe making these decisions. Yeah. And they're, they're in lies your problem. You know, why all this focus on Cyborg? I just never found the character that interesting in the first place. So why are you focusing on that particular character? You know, there's so many other things you could be focusing on, and that's the one you, you choose. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, you know? the Martian Manhunter is a big missed opportunity there. I think that could have been DC's Phil Coulson. You know what I'm saying? Like he could yes. have been in everybody's movies as somebody else, and then it could have been the thread to tie it all together that he was trying to figure out who he needed because he was aware of some kind of upcoming threat, and so he's in everybody's individual movies as another character, kind of judging to see if 
like he's the reason why the Justice League could form, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like he's trying to bring them together, kind of like how Coulson was with the with Shield and Fury trying to bring the the Avengers together. You no, know, I, I think that that Marvel got a taste of it and of, of what DC's been going through and got bit and then pulled back, and that was smart. And I think that that was was from the the Shield TV series that didn't really work, you know. And the reason it doesn't work is. If I'm watching the MCU or I'm watching DC Universe, why am I watching this? I'm watching it because I'm looking for superheroes. And if you don't really have superheroes incorporated into your in, into your show or movie, it's not going to work. You know, it, it, it's really that was a problem with Gotham. Batman never showed up. OK, it's yeah. just police commissioner with his trials and tribulations. Well, guess what? I'd rather watch Blue Bloods with Tom Selleck. You know, it's more yeah. engaging. You know, I, I don't want to, you're, you're, you're showing me a real life, you know, a real life series based on a superhero. Well, if I want a real life series, I'll just watch a real life series. There are plenty of them. Yeah. You know, and, and that's where I think, and Marvel recognized that and pulled back and said, okay, that's not going to work. All right. Yeah. And, and, and focus, you know, so they learned a lesson that DC has, has yet to learn. Um, I don't think it's insurmountable. I don't necessarily think you have to start from scratch. I don't think the problem is insurmountable. I think you can take the core that's working. All right. You know, definitely if you don't incorporate Peacemaker somehow, you're a moron. Okay. Clearly it works. People like it. There's got to be a way to, you know, to incorporate that. So they can do it based on the core, but there's a lot of stuff that you've got to get rid of. You know, as I said, I think the CW works. So you can incorporate them, fold them into it. Take what works, fold it in and get rid of everything that doesn't work. And yeah. from that standpoint, I guess, in a way, they are starting over, you know, if they do it that way. And I think that that could, that could, that could breathe new life to it and, and lose these, these, these series that don't make any real sense to me. You know, this, just, this reminds me of the situation that the comic industry, DC Comics was in at a certain point where they were like, we got so many versions of Superman and Batman we got this story over here doing one thing, this story over here doing something completely different. What do we need? We need a crisis to settle it all into one. Maybe they do just need to do a crisis Maybe. movie and then Maybe. just then you, then you got a Batman, then, a Superman. Yeah, and then move move forward from that point. Yeah, I, I I think that that may be what they need. I mean, you know, you need something to bring it all together. You know, and again, you know, maybe that's what they need. They need one person who's in charge who's going to try to bring all that into one one you know one column you've got all these little little satellites and you want to bring them all in together and maybe that is what they're missing you know i you know and I, again you know I, I give foggy all the credit in the world i mean he had a vision and that vision has taken over a decade to bring bring to 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 realization but you know he's done it you know and it works it definitely works absolutely well we are way out of time so oh my gosh yes basically the simple answer is does dc need an overhaul yeah yeah. <laughs> and I think DC knows it too. Yeah, they know it and uh it's coming. So we'll see what happens and how it shakes out. So apparently me and Rex just think they need to do one big crisis movie, take the the stuff that works and just move on after that. Just kind of start fresh. Like do a big oh, multiversal really? explosion and then start fresh. All right, you ready to draw the winner? <laughs> Let's the, uh, do it. So tonight's prize will be Evil Ernie number 1 premium metal cover. So this oh, is uh, nice. aluminum alloy. All right. This is not a foil cover. It's actual metal. will not bend. I'm trying to bend it right now. Okay. Unlike the paper problem. <laughs> yeah. Cheap right. shot there. So there you go. So that will be the prize of the winner. And just so everybody knows, uh, we do a drawing every week, two drawings, actually. So if you contribute into the chat tonight uh, for Robbie's show, we will do the drawing on Monday on our show on the experience from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern. And then uh, whoever enters into the chat on that show Robbie's going to draw right now, and the winner will be chosen from those that were uh, uh, contributing to the chat on our show on the experience last Monday. Indeed. All right. Got it loaded up, and that fantastic prize is going to Stevie B's House of Collectibles. Stevie B. Awesome. He's going to be happy to get that. So yeah, Stevie that's, B, that's really winner. great. That's really great. Maybe that is the solution of, for Marvel's paper quality issues. They should just start printing everything on metal comics, and then every comic would be like $300. <laughs> 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 All right, Rex, well, thank you for, for joining us, and thank you for the illuminating conversation. It's always a pleasure, my friend. Can't wait until, until I see what ne next week's uh, topic is going to be.
You never know what's going to happen in this crazy industry That's we call true. comics. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you think about all this nonsense that we were talking about. Station, y'all have a good Happy one. Happy Easter, everyone.